Hey Chamber family, today I want to share with you some easy and affordable ways you can record or create video Hey Chamber pros, I know a lot of us really want our first 100 subscribers on YouTube. However, we probably need some more bite-sized actionable tips to get there. So how do we do that? Well, that's what this video series is all about. The first one is simply on your cell phone. Uh, whatever smartphone you have, generally, if it's even just a few years old, it's got a good camera on it. Just go for it. Um, I've actually found my cell phone tends to have better quality than even my webcam that I bought. So <laughs> there's that. Um, for the most part, you just need to make sure you stabilize it. So this is a very cheap, as you can tell, tripod that I have. I keep one in the office. So this is my sad office one. And then I keep one in my car as well from for where we're, when we're out and about. The one that I like is the Amazon Basics tripod. It's like 20 bucks. As you can see, this one is not super great because that should, that should not do that. <laughs> but I still managed to use it because I'm thrifty. And then, so you need your tripod and then you just need a smartphone attachment. So this is a two-in-one. This is where a smartphone would go. It's got springs, so you literally would just squeeze it in there. And that's it. Um, the taller side is actually for an iPad or our other tablet. That is how I've recorded a lot of my videos, especially if it doesn't look like I'm using a green screen background, I probably used my cell phone for it. And then another tip with that that I have for you is if you use Google Drive, if you download the app on your phone, there's actually a button in Google Drive app on your phone that you can say, instead of uploading a file, you can record your video directly in Google Drive, which will save you from having to record it and then upload it to Dropbox or your Google Drive. It does take a few minutes for the process and to show up when you log in on your computer. But sometimes I, I like to do that just because it saves me an extra step. And then my second personal favorite way is to use OBS. You can check out my OBS video by clicking that top right icon. I, it is a free software, but it is a learning curve. So again, check out that video just to get kind of familiar with it. It's also the one that I use to live stream. Well, yeah, you can live stream. And then I also use it as my virtual camera so that I can use fancy backgrounds and I can add slideshows like this. <laughs> so uh, I'm a fan of OBS, but I do have other examples for you. Don't worry. Another one that hopefully you've probably heard of is Canva. <laughs> yes, that Canva. <laughs> Personally, I like to use it to change up the visuals. So a lot of times I'll use it to add text versions of what I'm talking about so that people get the information both audibly and visually. But you can also actually also embed your content onto your Canva slide, which is really cool, as well as a few other options that they have. So here I am, I've logged into Canva. All I did was create a video or a presentation, which is that 1920 by 1080. You can see, again, they have a ton of templates for you. And this is an example of where they've used a video in it. So you can see where you can add your current video and just work on like the background or additional things that you want on it. And then when you go to download video, it'll actually combine all of these at the bottom that you have. So that way you don't have to use a video editor to combine them unless you're going to add or change up some other stuff. Another cool thing that Canva offers is you can present directly from Canva. I'm going to do standard for now. So this is full screening this. So this might work. You're logged in onto a laptop that's presenting on a TV or if you have shared your full screen with people on Zoom. Another option is whenever you're clicking on that present to swap to presenter view. And it does get a little more tricky. I've just, I have a Windows computer, so you can click and drag to use up half a screen automatically. And then whenever you're in Zoom, just make sure you've selected this specific window and you're not sharing your whole screen. Point being, there's a lot you can do with that. So if you want to, definitely check out Canva and see what you can do with it. Another option you can do is Zoom. You can just not invite other people to it and present it to nobody and then record that video and download it. I have also recorded a few of my conversations with people in Zoom. So I actually, I presented a membership 101 to real people and then I downloaded it and, and then I edited it a little bit. I like to take out a lot of awkward spaces as I'm trying to find things on my computer and I take out some of my ums. I think it's impossible to take all of them out, but I'm working on it. Uh, <laughs> 
there I go again. Similarly, if you've done a Facebook Live, you can actually download your Facebook Live video and upload it to YouTube or other platforms or edit it on your computer if you want to make some changes or add it or make a new video using part of that as your content. So don't forget about your Facebook Lives, especially if you're into repurposing. The last one I want to share with you is called Flashback Express. I am using the, I am just using the free express version. I have a fancier video editor, so I don't need this, but you can definitely try it out if you want to. So I've already installed it on my computer and I just make sure I use the recording one. And this is where you have a few options. So a lot of times I tend to full screen and I can edit later, but if you want to, you can actually choose a region and I'll show you how this works. And for a window, that would be like if we had that presenting in Canva, we had a, an audience screen and a presenter screen, you could actually choose just the audience window. So again, that's another way for you to do that. Make sure you have your microphone and usually I'll do PC sounds too. Sometimes I make them a little bit quieter, but I still like to have them because it feels a little more natural when I'm showing people how to do things on my computer. And then another cool thing is if you click this webcam, I can't do it right now because I'm already recording my webcam in OBS, so I can't use it twice basically. But I will usually do this show webcam window while recording. As you can see, it's added a pop-up box for me, which I can resize. So whenever I am recording on a region, I will actually manually position this over part of it. So I'll see if it'll let me still play with this even though my webcam doesn't work. So we're gonna do region. I'm gonna hit record. So I like to make sure I show this red frame because it is just a good FYI for me. Again, for video, you wanna do that 16 by nine, so any of these is fine, but for the purposes of this, I'll just show you a small one. But usually you would, basically the bigger it is, the more of your screen you can record. So the quality is probably a little bit better, but if you've got like your own notes over to the side, you want enough room that you can actually read it on your computer. So sometimes I do choose a smaller one and it's actually left my webcam box up. So it's actually gonna record that too, So which is awesome. So I'm gonna click record. And it counts me down from three. And then this is, so it's not working right now. So I think it's because I'm trying to use the webcam that doesn't work. So I'm just gonna kind of show you real quick. Basically, whatever I want to be showing people, I just move it manually into that red box. And then same thing again, this was my webcam video. If you want to, you can just find a corner to stick it in. And no matter how you layer stuff or what you position, what you see inside this red box is basically what will be recorded on that video. So this time I'm recording without the little webcam box and it's working fine. So I figured that's what the problem was and it, and, and it was. So it's really nifty in that if you're using the full screen, you can actually minimize it to make it even smaller to drag around. Um, but for the most part, it's kind of telling you these are the only two buttons you have to worry about. And see, so also giving you a, a clock. So when you hit this pause, it won't record what you're doing, but it also knows you're not done. So if you want to Google something really quick, that's that's usually a good button to do. And then you don't have to worry about trying to cut it out of the video later, but you just hit stop whenever you're done. And then you would save it. But for this, if you're using the free version, you then need to open up the their player. So it's the Flashback Express 5 player. And then you need to export it into probably an mp4 but you've got other options as well and you have to export it even if you've saved it already which is usually a good step just in case something goes wrong it's saving it as a flashback express file so that means you can't go automatically upload it to youtube or play it you need to export it into an mp4 which is what allows you to add it into other video editing services or youtube or whatever you want to do with it but i've been using the software for probably a year now and actually i really like it as a screen recorder. So a lot of times I'll do that if I'm not trying to be fancy and add my little face over here in OBS. So if that was useful for you, do me a favor and hit that like button so I know. Or if it wasn't, leave a comment. Let me know why. Or let me know what you still have questions about. I really want to put out stuff that helps you specifically. My goal is to help you grow your chamber so you can focus on growing your impact in your community.